I'm going to speak about an um, actual problem about HPV infection incidence in uh, the world and in Russian Federation. Of course, the main accents should be still made on an ecological aspect of uh, papillomavirus, uh, which you all know. However, on the other hand, the virus with a low risk uh, have uh, some clinical impact. Uh, they have caused some problems, uh, such as anagenital condylomas, uh, uh, which uh, may serve uh, which be a problem uh, for a patient and cause the low quality of life. It's not a secret uh, that papilloma, human papilloma virus is the second most important cancer gene, uh, and it's um, uh, responsible for 5% of cases of cancer in um, uh, men and women, and 10% in women. And as already been mentioned um, in the previous reports, um, Here you can see the main uh, six um, cancers um, for which the papillomavirus is responsible. It's uh, cervical cancer, anal cancer, um, vaginal cancer, um, the cancer of penis, uh, vulva, and uh, oropharynx. And uh, unfortunately, the first place is held, um, the first place by incidence um, in uh, HPV-associated diseases is held by cervical cancer. However, the vulval cancer is also a problem, which is also associated with HPV, as is shown in this uh, demonstration, which is a clinical case um, in this patient, um, which is young. Um, uh, actually, in her analysis, um, nothing peculiar was seen. Um, her sexual debut was in 21 years, um, and then she immediately got in infected with the HPV, non oncogenic 611 and oncogenic strains. Uh, it caused uh, candlematosis of the vulva in um, one year. She was treated several times, and then uh, the virus persisted. The disease progressed uh, to uh, in, uh, and transformed into the vulva cancer. And in um, 38 years, she applied um, the cancer institute. She was diagnosed with the valve cancer. She was treated surgically. There was valvectomy. It was uh, a squamous cell cancer of the valve. And as it's a valve associated condition, it was also um, uh, accompanied by problems from this on the cervix. Um, it was dysplasia, and the patient also received treatment in 2008 before by photodynamic therapy. And um, finally, it all got well. It was a prone remission. She reproduced, she gave birth by cesarean section in 2011. However, in uh, 35 years, there was um, a relapse. It was removed, um, and also an inguinal lymph section was performed. And um, it was a valve cancer, uh, stage one uh, surgery, and now a remission. And about the topic of my speech, um, well, the incidence of uh, HPV the rise in different countries, uh, and it um, rise from 4 to 24 percent uh, in different countries and continents. Uh, however, unfortunately, in Russian Federation, uh, we do not have um, exact date on the uh, HPV incidents, um, for we have no room, common registry, and we can uh, only judged by it, of it um, based on population incidence and case control studies, um, and um, just extrapolate the data from these sources. Uh, probably in other countries, uh, maybe such situations. Um, unfortunately, we don't have uh, the state registry for HPV only for cancer and any genital conditions, which are virus association tumors. Uh, and then here, I think um, there is a very good publication, uh, this meta-analysis, which was before in the, our colleague, um, Svetlana Bregoska, um, which summarized um, the data <coughs> in Russian Federation and the post Soviet countries. Uh, as a result, it um, she was able to um, analyze the publication um, the, um, in this field um, on the incidence of HPV in Russia, Belarus, Moldova, Ukraine, Armenia, Azerbaijan. So she was able to summarize this data. And as a result um, of this meta-analysis, um, 
which includes publications from 12 countries. Um, she analyzed mostly um, high risk uh, HPV its incident in women, and turned out um, that the, the data on HPV incidents vary greatly based on different studies. In women with a normal serological picture, the HPV incidence um, varies from 0 to 48 percent. However, median is about 20 percent. Among tumors with a low-grade um, dysplastic changes, um, the HPV incidence varies from 30 to 100 percent, and the median is about 40 percent. Um, among the women with uh, high-grade epithelial lesions, the HPV incidence um, varies from 70 to 100 percent, and the median is 8 percent. And the study included the data which were published uh, in different regions of Russian Federation. Uh, also, um, the data from Moscow, including the data from uh, Blokin uh, Cancer Research Institute. Also, there was St. Petersburg data. And as a result of this big analysis, um, they were able to analyze the incidence of um, different subtypes of HPV in uh, female population of Russian Federation. And the first place in the, the overall population with the normal cytological pictures was held by HPV 16. The second place was uh, all held by type 39, 31, 32. And uh, type 18 uh, is below, which is unexpected. Among women with high grade dysplasia, the first place is gold by HPV 16, uh, then it's followed by type uh, 31 and 33, and only then type 18. And the same uh, figures were obtained in uh, women with invasive cancer, invasive cervical cancer. The first place held by HPV 16, then uh, type 38, and then type 18. And uh, it really corresponds to the data obtained in St. Petersburg. Um, these. Um, Stated our incidents um, were performed some time before, um, and in incidents about 30 percent. Um, so this data demonstrate uh, the importance of um, this problem, um, and also they demonstrate the lack of statistical control of this infection among female population. Although this virus is responsible for tumors of um, the cervix, uh, and historically it's related to sexual activity of the women, and the high risk group is a um, group of women with promiscuity with an um, early beginning of um, sexual life with a large um, number of partners, and women ignoring the sexual hygiene. And of course, it was demonstrated by our colleagues um, that the level of HPV incidence is higher among we girls who started uh, sexual life uh, earlier, who um, often changed their sexual partners. Um, and in relation to sexual activity of uh, girls in rest federations, um, we also do not have a very solid data. We are based on publication of case controls, the case control studies. Um, and uh, while results um, of this uh, study performed in St. Petersburg, um, among 500 um, uh, girls studying in school, there was a survey. It was performed about uh, 2011. And at that time, uh, the sexual debate was uh, at about 14, 15 years based on this survey. The latest survey performed in 2015 demonstrates um, that the sexual debate age uh, is about 16 to 17 years. <coughs> and this is a survey which included about um, 1,000 um, girls standing in um, medical colleges. And here you can see the and age of sexual abuse. So um, the overall analysis is impeded, um, overall analysis of sexual activity, and we it's hard to say where it is really promiscuity among uh, young females in rest of duration. Um, based on published data, the age tend to grow. Well, based on the results we can read in literature, it tends to be so.
On the other hand, um, it's um, an anonymous uh, survey. Perhaps it's um, it can be trusted. Um, however, on the other hand, in the same um, publication, there was an anonymous survey about vaccination in these women. And what's pleasant, um, it uh, seems that uh, not a really big part of the population displays a negative uh, attitude towards vaccination. And most of the women um, think that vaccination is needed. However, it's um, a bit skewed for um, most of these um, young women studied in medical college. Um, there is a big difference between males and females um, on attitude to vaccination. However, the overall attitude is uh, positive. Um, we've seen no radical um, adversaries of vaccination for the advantages of primary prophylaxis of HIV infection uh, has been demonstrated and now it's proved that um, um, the vaccination may be performed to time and it be protects from six main times of cancer as demonstrated by many studies. In rest of the duration, uh, the R2 vaccines registered to be valent and quadrivalent, um, although there is a um, non-valent vaccine uh, uh, commercially available, it's not registered in Russia. And uh, these vaccines, um, vaccination that performed twice uh, in zero and six months. Uh, and effectiveness is good. The proven effectiveness is evident, is evident for you, for our colleagues. It is evident that it works. It's a great primary prophylaxis. It was shown by different countries in which is widely spread now. First of all, it's Australia and New Zealand, also now USA. And they were able to achieve um, lower incidence of um, some associated conditions. First of all, anagenital condyloma. It's most easily documented. However, it is um, Alexei Mikhailovich uh, has already told uh, the number of people vaccinated uh, is also important the percentage. In Australia, it's 80 to 84 uh, percent, and here we can see a real uh, low incidence of angina candeloma. Um, it's lower by 90 percent. Uh, in Sweden, uh, the, only 25 percent of population is vaccinated, and. Uh, the incidence, um, the decrease in this advantageous condyloma is not as great. Um, here you can see the um, number of people vaccinated um, by HPV in Europe and probably the years and it's related of active vaccination is, uh, although um, the effectiveness of vaccine is evident, it was demonstrated in all the world. And um, it was demonstrated in phase one and phase two studies, uh, and even in phase three studies now. In many countries, the vaccination is in the uh, vaccination calendar, it's free. However, in Russian Federation, uh, we do not include uh, the primary prophylaxis in the vaccination calendar. I won't stop here uh, on the proven effectiveness uh, of primary prophylaxis um, in different countries. Uh, where the percentage of people vaccinated is high, there the incidence um, of HPV spread in the population is, is um, near zero, and the prognosed um, decrease in um, cervical cancer incidence is also great. Um, the same tendency is observed in USA. The incidence um, and uh, also on the world map. Um, if it was uh, before 2009, it was about 20%. Now it's uh, lower than 9%. Uh, it's still fall degrees. Uh, and the main idea, main results of primary prophylaxis, um, the analysis of um, HPV incidence, uh, anagenal condenomas, um, dysplasia incidence, uh, and also cervical cancer incidents. But as I've already mentioned, uh, unfortunately, in Russian Federations, uh, Federation, we have a lot of problems um, with um, including this vaccine and um, vaccination calendar. Uh, David Gorgivich is well acquainted with this problem, and uh, he's involved in the propaganda on the primary prophylaxis, Alexei Mihailovich also. In Russian Federation, in order to demonstrate uh, the possibilities uh, uh, what was done. There were some regional programs uh, 
But unfortunately, as Alexei had mentioned, um, there was a program in St. Petersburg. They were vaccines with the AUF3. However, due to lack of um, information in, in the population, they were unused, unfortunately. Although, of course, the year was an effectiveness demonstrated in uh, federal program in Russia, in Moscow regions. It was um, an effect on uh, the anaconduloma incidence um, in um, girls uh, vaccinated by uh, HPV vaccine. You can see the lower incidence on this graph. Uh, it was also the positive dynamics was demonstrated in uh, region in the Hantemansisk region, um, also there was a lower incidence of um, an gentle condylomas. Um, and of course, um, we encounter um, and we speak about effectiveness of primary reflexes. For us, it's um, quite evident. Um, but in fact, um, unfortunately, we encounter the problem of uh, the lack of um, possibility. Uh, or funding uh, for free vaccinations. Um, we can perform it uh, really in um, the general populations in in adolescent uh, girls. Um, unfortunately, the information is um, spread not what uh, not quite enough in the population. Although I demonstrated the other data, these were students at medical colleges. So they are informed. In other colleges and schools, um, there is a lack of data on uh, the effectiveness of vaccinations. Therefore, these meetings, these roundtables are important. We have to um, develop a strategy to, pro to propagate this um, primary prophylaxis in the general population. And we have to discuss uh, the means uh, for uh, statistical analysis of incidence of HPV in general populations, uh, and perhaps creation of a multicentral registry on the incidence of HPV, which may help uh, to promote the idea of primary prophylaxis. Thank you.